popular way that I like to test this software in the morning is to just get in here and do a quick twist test. So with our default cube here, I'm going to press S X 1.5 to scale it out 1.5 times. And we'll just look at it in top view and I will just go in box cutter and do a in gone box cut or do an in gone cut. And we'll press B to bevel it, give it a pretty big bevel, press space bar to apply my favorite way to apply. And we'll tap into edit mode and I'll just select this edge and we'll control click mark, which will allow us to bevel this. I'll tap one in order to just uh, quickly set it to a profile of 0.5 for this. And in object mode, we can see that, that bevel doesn't show. So normally I go into bevel and just shift scroll in order to move it up the stack because the Boolean data destroys the bevel data. So at this point, we can press Alt X to bring up the mirror tool. And I like pressing X in order to reset it to default, just to ensure that we're all using the same mirror tool. And we'll just mirror it on a Z. And next thing I'll do is press D and switch box cutter over to circle. And we'll just draw a quick circle and just bring it in. But we'll press J in order to turn it into a union. And now we have a union on the inside of the shape, in fact. Uh, one good turn deserves another, so we'll put just one more. In fact, I accidentally went to J too soon, which means it's extruding in the opposite direction. But that's fine. I could just press E, and we can extrude it wherever we need, as well as tab into edit mode and just modify things specifically with dots, or even press Q and use mod scroll to bring back a specific modifier I would like to adjust. We can see that even in this example that the cylinder broke down a little bit on its shading. So I'll press Q and we'll roll back to bring back that cylinder. And the first thing I'll do is under operations, we'll choose to sharpen it because under my sharpen settings, under control tilde, I have sharp options set to apply crease, which will allow me to sub D it, giving it a little bit more definition on the geometry, as well as put some edge loops in with control R to just help that shade a little better. It's nothing major, it just irks me. So we'll rotate the view a couple of times from front by just pressing, I believe, numpad eight. And we'll just go into ingon. And notice that I started off the mesh in order to trigger view align mode instead of surface draw. Um, and that is because I want a very specific result of triple clicking to laser cut in order to send it out at this particular angle. And to fix the shading, all I have to do is just press Q shift click sharpen in order to bring up the auto smooth adjustment modal where I can just scroll the wheel to get the smoothing exactly where I want in which case the default auto smooth jump setting is actually quite optimal for most people's needs however I do probably want to double check and make sure I don't accidentally over smooth the front of the cylinder we can also alt x and notice that I'm in mirror but the z is already in use so I could click it to deactivate it or we can actually choose to not close this after operation. I can just click it to activate it and deactivate it just to show you how we can mirror from this side and we can also mirror from the opposite. So if you wanted to go in and flip it or even choose which mirror modifier you're modifying, you can do that inside of the mirror tool uh, as of this latest update everyone should be using by now. So we'll just mirror this to the other side and I'll just right click to get out of the operation and we're pretty much good to go for this test. A little bit over explanation for the build up, but let's get into it. So with dice, you can press one, two, three in order to choose how many segments you want. Just uh, some arbitrary numbers we set just to ensure that you have a quick, rapid, fun dice experience. And in case I went over it too fast, pressing Q and going under mesh tools will actually let you go to dice when you have a mesh selected. So we're just going to go to setting two, but I'm actually going to press T in order to two twist this operation. So basically, whenever we click to apply dice, it will actually jump us into the modal of twist 360. And so now that we're here, we'll just go ahead and click to apply where I can then talk about these perimeter edges. So because of the way that this mesh still has faces over here on the side, that is gonna cause issues with it showing these seams in the middle because they just don't merge right. And that's because there's really no modifier solution for deleting interior faces at this time. So we'll just delete those faces where you can see instant, instantly that that seam is gone. So back in object mode, we can just press Q and go back under Twist 360 if we want to adjust the Twist 360 itself. However, the point of today's video is to show you that if you press Shift D, you can actually duplicate a 
twist 360 that you're in the middle of modifying. So if you want to make a second one to just stick out, and you can do this just as many times as you want. Of course, I'll need to zoom out a little bit due to mouse wrap issues that aren't yet implemented at this time. But who knows, maybe that will be taken care of in the future. But now that we are zoomed out a little bit, we're able to adjust this. And if you look at the help over on the right side, it also shows that you can press F in order to flip it or basically rotate it 180 degrees. So if you wanted it to be a very particular look, you could do that. So in order to tie this video off, we can press N and bring up the end panel where I can select one of these and just choose to just type in something into rotation. In my case, I'm going to type in hashtag frame times 0 0.15 and we'll just press enter and so now this will basically rotate in perpetuity because it's calculating the frame and multiplying it by a number and so we can actually select that driver and on the next one just paste the driver but instead of just letting it be that we'll put a negative sign I was gonna say a minus sign I guess it is minus but we'll put a negative in front so it goes the opposite way and for the last one we'll actually paste the driver but instead of letting it be frame We'll change it to be coast. So that and that actually broke it. So let's make sure we have a pound at the front. Coast times uh, let's try frame times 0 0.15. So we need something in it in order to generate something. And now we actually have the result that we want. So I actually just rehearsed this where I just typed it in from scratch and I had no issues. And here we see myself. Uh, just making a um, mistake that could have been avoided with a little more rehearsal, but no problem. Uh, continuing on, we'll just keep playing with numbers until we get something that's somewhat random. You know, it really doesn't matter. It's just a shape that we're just goofing off with. And I'll select everything and press Alt M and we'll just uh, control click to just get a material scroll. We don't even know what materials we got yet because we're just in the viewport. But to tie this off, I will select this shape and press Q O T, which is basically Q operations and two shape. And with the F nine, we can actually change this to be a cylinder. And by pressing S and Z, we can actually scale this in. For some reason with these twist objects, they just make it a little bit bigger, but it's really no problem. And we'll go ahead and just sharpen it at a level of subdivision, bevel it. And then from here, just add a level of solidify maybe press 2 in order to push it out as much inwards as it goes outwards and also press R to make it have no inwards and just be only rem and we see that the help was being obscured by our end panel which is a annoyance that drives me crazy but by pressing alt M and shift clicking blank material we can now see inside of our results again so if we jump over to render this is basically what we created just in this quick video just a quick rundown of what you can expect by playing with dice and twist 360. In fact, I'm just selecting these objects and alt clicking sharpen in order to ensure that their shading is at their best. So to tie this video up, we can just have nothing selected, press Q and choose add camera in order to just add a camera where we can just zoom in and out. And we're basically rotating around a rotating object, which is kind of um, a mental conundrum into itself. but. To wrap it up, we will just scale a plane up to 80, something I'm just into now, and we'll just place it below. Scroll material, scroll till we get a nice material as the base floor. And then we can press Alt-VV in order to cycle through various environments. In this case, I don't want to actually see the background overlay, so I press Tab in order to turn that off. And now we can just press S and cycle through various environments till we get something that we like. In fact, I'm feeling a little monochromatic today. So, you know, as I, if I rotate the environment against the rotation of the camera, uh, kind of almost against the rotation of the objects, it looks a little crazy. But to end this on a nice note, what we can do is shift A at a curve. And with our curve, we can just first give it some thickness because we're in render view. We're not going to see it otherwise. Uh, just give it some thickness and we will just alt click to add an emission. And for this emission, we'll just duplicate it and just place it at various areas outside of the object just to get something showing in the render. 
And then of course I'm rendering under EVHQ settings, just the defaults as always. They're typically set to my favorite default, so people getting into Blender can just quickly get to the render settings that they're seeing shown in these videos. Uh, we can press Alt-VV again. And while we're in this viewport rotate mode, instead of changing anything, I'm gonna press Q in order to turn on a mission. And we can just you know, let this thing just play us out. So with that, I can finally wrap up for today. I thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.